everyone. It's Deacon Kate Ann to do children's time today. And today I'm going to be working with three equilateral triangles. So if you want to make this at home, just make sure that all the sides are the same measurement. And the key here is that the angle that you draw is has to be at 60 degrees. Take it from one who did it another way. So this works. So the first one I'm going to talk about is God the Father. God the Father is has created the earth and the moon and the stars and the sun and rainbows and sunsets, animals that slither on the ground. And God even created some of those flowers that make us sneeze. So then we're going to talk about God the Son. God the Son 
who came to the earth, remember, as baby Jesus at Christmas. He grew into a man so people could touch, hear, see, and understand and believe. Remember, Jesus did miracles that people now could see. The feeding of the 5,000 from a little boy's lunch of five loaves and two fishes. So we would pay attention and believe that he is the Son of God. Jesus lived and he died on Good Friday, but he rose again at Easter. And today he has promised us that he would leave us not alone, but leave us a helper. God, the Holy Spirit, he is our helper. He is our guide. He is our teacher. And he is our friend if we ask him. The Holy Spirit changes our hearts so we can be more like Jesus. The Holy Spirit fills our heart with good things like love and patience, kindness, and forgiveness. So we have three things that attach together. And it makes this neat little kind of a tent, kind of a pyramid like that. Okay, so you could make one of these at home. And I made one with my magic string, which I will teach you someday how to make. But this you could hang in your house just to remind people that there's God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. We're going to talk more about this on Trinity Sunday, but because today is the day that Jesus promised us the Holy Spirit that he would be giving us, I wanted to talk about how the three of them are all joined together. And I also made a really teeny tiny one, which I thought would be really neat for place settings on a table if you wanted to do that. So before I go, I want you to remember something. I want you to remember that our God who created the sun and the moon and the stars, the rivers, the oceans, the mountains, and all those things that slither in the ground, and even those things, those flowers that make us sneeze, he took a moment and he thought, I want to make one of you too. God bless. Have a great week. We'll see you next week. Bye. Well, good morning, everyone. This is our uh, St. Thomas's morning worship service for this Sunday, which is also the uh, Victoria Day weekend. And so I thought we would again uh, use the uh, Book of Common Prayer, but it's an adapted sort of shorter form. Dearly beloved, the scripture moveth us in sundry places to acknowledge our and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, and that we should not dissemble nor cloak them before the face of Almighty God or Heavenly Father, but confess them with a humble, lowly, penitent, and obedient heart, to the end that we may obtain forgiveness of the same by God's infinite goodness and mercy. And although we ought at all times humbly to acknowledge our sins before God, Yet ought we most chiefly so to do when we meet together, to render thanks for the great benefits that we have received at his hands, to set forth his most worthy praise, to hear God's most holy word, and to ask those things which are requisite and necessary as well for the body as the soul. Wherefore, I pray and beseech you to accompany me with a pure heart and humble voice under the throne of the heavenly grace. Mighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done, and there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou them, O God, which confess their faults. Restore thou them that are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto us in Christ Jesus, our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desireth not the death of a sinner, but rather that they may turn from their wickedness and live, 
hath given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins. God pardoneth and absolveth all them that truly repent and unfeignedly believe in the Holy Gospel. Wherefore, we beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do at this present, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to God's eternal joy. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. The Venite. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving, and show ourselves glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God, and a great King above all gods. In his hand are all the corners of the earth, and the strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his, and he made it, and his hands prepared the dry land. O come, let us worship and fall down and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is the Lord our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Carol will now do our first reading from Acts for us. Good morning. A reading from Acts 17. Then Paul stood in front of the stadium and said, Athenians, I see how extremely religious you are in every way. For as I went through the city and looked carefully at your objects of worship, I found among them an altar with the inscription to the unknown God. What therefore you worship is unknown. The God who made the world and everything in it, he who is the Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in shrines made by human hands, nor is he served by human hands as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all mortals life and breath and all things. From one ancestor he made all nations to inhabit the whole earth, and he allotted the times of their existence and the boundaries of the places where they would live, so that they would search for God and perhaps grope for him and find him. Though indeed he is not far from each one of us, for in him we live and move and have our being, as even some of your own poets have said, for we too are his offspring. Since we are God's offspring, we ought not to think that the deity is like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by the art of the imagination of mortals. While God has overlooked the times of human ignorance, now he commands all of us, people everywhere, to repent, because he has fixed the day on which he will have the world judged in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed. And of this, he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the people. Oh. 
There's a can, uh, canticle, given that this is Rogation Sunday, we shall use uh, part of the Benedicite. O all ye works of the Lord, bless ye the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. O ye angels of the Lord, bless ye the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. O ye heavens, bless ye the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. O ye waters that be above the firmament, bless ye the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. O all ye powers of the Lord, bless ye the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. O ye sun and moon, bless ye the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. O ye stars of heaven, bless ye the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. O ye showers and dew, bless ye the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. O ye winds of God, bless ye the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. O ye fire and heat, winter and summer, dews and frosts, bless ye the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. O ye frost and cold, ice and snow, bless ye the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. O nights and days, light and darkness, lightnings and clouds, bless ye the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. O let the earth bless the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. Mountains and hills, green things upon the earth, wells, seas, and floods, bless ye the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. O ye whales, and all that move in the waters, O all ye fowls of the air, O all ye beasts and cattle, bless ye the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. O ye people, bless ye the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. Kate Ann, our deacon, will now read the gospel passage for us. A reading from the Gospel of John. If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me because I live. You also will live. On that day, you will know that I am in the Father and you in me and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me. And those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. This is the word of the Lord. Well, in today's gospel passage, uh, the very front or start of that passage is Jesus saying, if you love me, then you will keep my commandments. So one of those if-then statements, and it seems to me that it naturally uh, raises the question in our minds, well, what are those commandments? And how is it that we show our love for Jesus by keeping his commandments? What are those commandments? So if you call back to your mind uh, what he gave to us as his commandments, he said that you might love one another as I have loved you. This is my commandment. Uh, you think back to uh, the summary of the law in the Book of Common Prayer that we used to have each week with the uh, when it was uh, Eucharist. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. So that all of his commandments are about how we ought to love one another. And that is how we show our love for Jesus, is that we put his love into action in our own lives. I am constantly amazed at the initiatives in this parish during these COVID days and shutdown days of the love that is being uh, put into action for other people. So that whether, and, and you think about our parish more, more broadly, um, 
what we have done with our grounds, our property, our community gardens. Um, every resource we have here is, is being put available, made available to people so that our love can be put into action. And it doesn't always have to be big things. It can be little things too. A smile with somebody, a phone call, simple little things, especially during these days. I was reading a story uh, the other day. I can't remember where I was reading this, unfortunately, but a, uh, a clergy person who mentioned that she was out uh, walking and uh, uh, one of her neighbors, who was an elderly lady, happened to be at her front door. And uh, so this clergy person asked, of course, well, how are you minding the social isolation and being shut in? And, and, uh, and this elderly woman started to laugh as in her response. And she said, um, my dear, for the last 10 years of my life, I've been living in social isolation and people have been avoiding me. And now all of a sudden, people are actually being kind and nice. And I thought, it is the little things, putting love into action in little ways, that really changes people's lives. It's love being put into action that, that lifts up people who are feeling a little bit down. And it seems to me that we grow in that love, um, especially through contemplative prayer. So that when we, we sit in the silence, start of the day, the end of the day, and think over our day, when we sit in the silence, then we are confronted maybe with where through the course of this day have I succeeded at putting love into action and where over the course of this day have I failed at putting love into action. And again, it's the little things, the teeny things. And we are sustained in that life through prayer. It keeps us going. But one other thing that it seems to me is a, a benefit to our uh, to, to nurturing and, and building our prayer life is so many people are suffering tremendous loneliness these days uh, because of so, so social isolation. And I find that as I pray through the parish list and then there are a number of people with particular concerns that when you spend some time in the silence and the time in the silence thinking about that person's concerns and the burdens that are weighing them down. It's like they become present to you somehow. And I think it um, counters loneliness. So that not only the benefits to it are not only that we grow in love, but it also benefits us in feeling a little bit more connected with one another. And so I love these, these simple sort of statements that Jesus makes. It is such a simple and to the point thing. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And those commandments are about love one another just as I have loved you. It's a simple little thing. We have, through the centuries, so complicated up uh, what Christian life and Christian living in that is about. It's a simple thing. Can we put his love into action the same way that he did? Amen. <laughs>
will continue with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray on us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. The Lord show thy mercy upon us, and grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the Queen, and mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. Endue thy ministers with righteousness, and make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people, and bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, and evermore mightily defend us. O God, may clean our hearts within us, and take not thy Holy Spirit from us. Collect for Rogation Sunday, which is the Church's Earth Day that we have been doing for, I guess, over 1,200 years now. Collect for Rogation Sunday. Almighty God, Lord of heaven and earth, we humbly pray that your gracious providence may give and preserve to our use the fruitfulness of the land and the seas, and may prosper all who labor therein, that we who are constantly receiving good things from your hand may always give you thanks. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. O God, who art the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom, defend us, thy humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in thy defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries, through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day, defend us in the same with thy mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings may be ordered by thy governance, to do always that is righteous in thy sight. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, the fountain of all goodness, we humbly beseech thee to bless our sovereign lady, Queen Elizabeth, the parliaments of the Commonwealth, and all who are set in authority under her, that they may order all things in wisdom, righteousness, and peace, to the honor of thy holy name, and the good of thy church and people, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, the creator and preserver of all, we humbly beseech thee for all sorts and conditions of people, that thou wouldst be pleased to make thy ways known unto them, thy saving health unto all nations. More especially, we pray for the good estate of the church, that it may be so guided and governed by thy good spirit, that all who profess and call themselves Christians may be led into the way of truth and hold the faith in unity of spirit, in the bond of peace, and in righteousness of life. Finally, we commend to thy goodness all those who are any ways afflicted or distressed in mind, body, or estate, especially those for whom our prayers are now desired, aloud or in the quiet of our hearts. that it may please thee to comfort and relieve them according to their several necessities, giving them patience under their sufferings and a happy issue out of all their afflictions. And this we beg for Jesus Christ, his sake. Amen. Almighty God, fountain of all mercies, we then unworthy servants to give thee most humble and hearty thanks for all thy goodness and loving kindness to us and to all people. We bless thee for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all, for thine inestimable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, 
for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we beseech thee, give us that due sense of all thy mercies, that our hearts may be unfeignedly thankful, and that we show forth thy praise not only with our lips, but in our lives, the giving up ourselves to thy service, and by walking before thee in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen. Let us go out into the world to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia.